Welcome to At The Market, a look ahead at Chicago area real estate. Brought to you by At Properties, the number one brokerage firm in the region. Welcome back to At The Market. I'm Peter Olesker, Vice President of Corporate Communications for At Properties. Last month, we saw a recovery begin to take hold in the real estate market, and we talked with a number of experts about what that meant for home buyers. While the market has continued to gain momentum, and as more home sellers begin to think about getting back into the market this summer, we wanted to talk about what's changed for them as a result of COVID-19. I'm happy to be here today with three of the best minds at App Properties. We have Thad Wong, co-founder. We have our Executive Vice President of Agent Development, Amy Kaur, and our Executive Vice President of Marketing, Natasha Patla. Uh, Amy, I wanted to start with you and just kind of give an overview of what you're seeing out there, what you're hearing from agents about, uh, about the market now, particularly as it relates to home sellers. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me. And, you know, it's really interesting because right now the market is really busy. You know, I think what's really important for sellers to know right now, because I think a lot of them have been asking our brokers, is do we wait at all or should we get our homes on the market? And, you know, we are seeing a, a push of buyers right now. And if I were a seller or if a seller was asking me, I would really encourage them to get on now. Uh, I think the sooner the better, because I do think that sellers are going to start recognizing that the market is doing pretty well. And we're going to continue to see additional inventory coming on this summer and into the fall. Sure. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we had got off to an incredible start in 2020. Uh, contract activity was up by about 30%. And then we saw this precipitous drop, of course, and we were tracking almost 50% below year ago levels in mid-April. And then we've had this you know, incredible rebound. And um, actually for the last four weeks of May leading up to Memorial Day, on a year-over-year -year basis, uh, for those four weeks, we were ahead of 2019. We were almost 3% ahead of 2019 on new contracts. So Thad, I wanna ask you, Early on in this crisis, there was a lot of debate about whether our recovery would be V-shaped, U-shaped, a W. Um, what do you see, foresee for housing uh, in terms of a recovery? In our market locally, we feel that we're going to get right back to where we started prior to COVID and prior to the killing of George Floyd. So we do feel like there's going to be a significant amount of demand. We don't see astronomical appreciation going with that demand because the last two years were down and a little flat, but we do see a robust market. I can't say that it's gonna be a perfect V. We don't know exactly how the fall is gonna to respond to the unemployment, and we don't know exactly how badly COVID is gonna come back in the fall. That being said, I am bullish on residential for the rest of this year, and I think next year will be phenomenal. I think the renewed energy and focus on home is amazing. I mean, we've been waiting for this desire. Sometimes it's reality TV, uh, but now it's residential homes and where do I live? And that's what people want to improve. They want to improve the home they live in and the location as well. Well, let's talk about pricing. We've got, you know, I think what we would all agree is, is strong demand now. We have limited supply. Uh, you know, one would um, surmise that that means that there is upward pressure on pricing. And we've seen it. We've seen it at the beginning of the year. Um, the latest stats from Illinois Association of Realtors showed that pricing, median price was up 6.7% year over year for April. A lot of those homes went under contract in January and February before you know, we were hit with this pandemic. Um, so are we, so you know, looking forward, are we going to see really aggressive pricing? Are we going to see crazy appreciation? Or um, you know, do, do sellers need to temper their expectations somewhat? Yeah, I don't see we're going to, I don't think we're going to see very extreme appreciation. I mean, if you think what's going on in our economy from COVID and we look at what even the good lens says our fall is going to look like, the bonuses are not going to be significant in most industries. Uh, if the stock market can stay stable, that would be a blessing, but there's going to be a lot of volatility over the next 12 months. Volatility creates uncertainty uncertainty reduces pricing and what people how much people are willing to pay how far out of the skis they want to get even though it's being supported by low rates so i think the good news is we have a really healthy market where you're going to see a lot of homes trade hands a lot of families move around a lot of 
people moving around, a lot of second homes being sold, but I don't think we're gonna see skyrocketing appreciation, except in really affordable properties, sub markets, affordable second home market under half a million dollars. That's flying off of the shelves. Sure, Amy, anything to add there on the pricing front? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, is that for pricing, it is going to be market to market and micro market to micro market. You know, if you're looking in certain pockets where you've got, a, you know, entry level buyers coming into the suburbs, we are seeing a lack of supply right now. So you are seeing a push on pricing or multiple offers. But to that point, there are other markets that there is still enough supply and then the demand just isn't there. And so, you know, what I would say to sellers, in my opinion, right now still is the best time to get one of the best prices for your property right now. Um, and to his point, you are going to need to put some work into it if it's dated. Buyers still want turnkey. They want it easy to move into. And, you know, you've got to consider that when you're getting ready to sell. Something that you both touched on, which um, I think is really interesting, is this whole notion of um, having your home turnkey if you're a seller. And for the last two years in our, mar in our market, we've really seen where that's been the case. Uh, you know, the buyers have held all the cards. Um, they have kind of, you know, turned the tables almost and, and uh, you know, there was no such thing as a fixer-upper anymore. I mean, buyers want perfect. They want to go in and, and, and buy it perfect. Um, ha and, and you both noted that, um, you know, that that's still going to put a seller in the be best position. Have you seen a shift at all um, because, you know, demand is, is a little stronger right now? Not really. I mean, we've seen sellers pricing uh, get closer to their pricing, even though they have a fixer upper or they have a dated home, the price has crept up a little bit. But really what a buyer will do oftentimes is switch locations and find where they can get what they want and sacrifice location. So it is location, 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 but as the price gets really, really high and people then on top of it have to spend more money to live there and do work, oftentimes they're choosing a slightly less desirable location, but similar location and getting what they want, getting a little bigger. Yeah, trading location for product. I mean, I agree. At some point, you know, if you're a buyer and you are, get pushed out of a market because of price and what you want, you are going to go to sort of that next market that works. But I will say what we have been seeing kind of in some more of the suburban pockets that I've been watching on the North Shore, you know, we are seeing things that in the past have been considered a little bit more dated are moving, but it's really more because I think we're seeing this big push right now, the initial demand of buyers kind of coming out of shelter in place. And, you know, a lot of stuff is going to continue to come on. I know more sellers are getting ready to sell, but until that happens, it is giving an opportunity for some of these dated homes to luck out a little bit. But I do call it luck because I would say, you know, who doesn't want something that's turnkey and ready to go? And if people are, have the capacity to pay a little bit more for it, they will. Um, you know, so I just, I, I would say as a seller, be cautiously optimistic. This is a, a nice market for us right now. Um, but just be smart, you know, talk with your broker about really understanding the dynamics and the supply and demand, because it all comes down to economics at the end of the day. Okay, well, let's transition to marketing. And let's bring in Natasha Patla, who's our Vice President of Marketing. All of the great ads, all of the, the love billboards, um, the, the great magazine advertising, the online advertising, it's all done by Natasha. Um, so welcome in, Natasha. How are you doing? Great. Nice to see everyone. Thanks for having me. Natasha, a lot has changed in terms of real estate marketing as a result of this pandemic. What's the big takeaway for sellers? The biggest takeaway is exposure is everything. Online exposure is the really the most important thing right now. We know buyers don't want to visit 20 homes. They really want to see three to five homes right now. And what we've always known, which is just more apparent today, is that the first showings happen online. And you know, we're seeing with our website traffic an increase year to date up 17% for our page views and up 35% from year from last year at this time, um, which is you know, exciting and just helps us kind of prove that point. Yeah, I think just to expand on that a bit, you know, we knew this a long time ago. We were the first company to remind our agents that the first showing is online. So just refining our tools, making sure we have virtu virtual walkthroughs and video available so that when a buyer sees one of our listings online, they get enough better understanding of the house and a clear perspective that they know if they want to schedule an appointment or move on. 
Yeah, I think with COVID-19, it really uh, impacted our brokers and had them really realize just how much we offer them when it comes to, you know, needing to do things digitally, using technology to be able to get their listings uh, promoted and out there because we were really forced to do everything online. You know, for a while, people weren't doing very much or anything in person. So I just think it was a nice opportunity for agents to really recognize that the organization that they're with has really been putting this in place all along. And when they really needed it, it was turnkey for them. And it allowed them not to miss a beat, which in turn allowed their clients not to miss a beat. Sure. So for sellers, like what specifically are we doing to market their homes right now? You know, what, what tools are we using? How is, that, how is that content getting distributed? Where is it being seen? Um, and how is it resulting in showings? Natasha? Well, we encourage our agent, we have a video department, so we encourage our agents to utilize video, floor plans, 3D tours. We partnered with a company called Real Vision, so we do encourage them to use that. Again, as Thad mentioned, you know, we have been doing this for a really, really long time. It's just, you know, more adoption right now. And then in terms of distribution, we're advertising on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, AdWorks, which is a retargeting online on websites such as ESPN, CNN, but we still do use a you know traditional mix of print advertising and direct mail. We do feel like that those are strong as well. We talked about uh, showing your home uh, with a you know in a worry-free environment for buyers last time. What do sellers need to know about uh, people coming into their home for a physical showing? Amy, if you could take oh. that one. Sure. Well, I think, you know, right away when COVID-19 came into play, our agents had to really adjust quickly and recognize that, you know, there were going to still be times where people needed to get into homes to see them. And so they had to recognize we needed to figure out how to do that in a way that everyone could feel safe. So, you know, we made sure that our agents were working with having gloves, having masks, um, making sure that people coming through also, you know, had safety PPE available to them to come in safely. Uh, hand sanitization is super important. So they made sure that they had that available. It was really being one step ahead of whoever you were going to be interacting with uh, for who was coming into the home. But it was also really important to make sure your seller was comfortable with what was going to happen. And so, you know, our agents really worked effectively to do essentially hands-free showings, which allowed all of the doors to be open that they would need access to, that a buyer would need access to. We would have all of the lights on. So everything was ready to go to make it really easy for somebody to physically walk through a home without impacting any germs or having any sort of impact that would be fearful to the sellers. Are sellers doing open houses now? That restriction has been lifted. Do, do, we, do you recommend that sellers do open houses? Well, I think the recommendation needs to come back to what are the sellers comfortable with? You know, this is all about safety and everyone's level of safety is a little bit different. That being said, there have been guidelines put into place as to how many people can be into a, in a home at one time during open houses. The maximum is 10 people. And it is also encouraged that PPE is worn uh, when people are coming in. You know, the other thing that we have had and in place since the beginning of COVID-19 is we've created a disclosure that allows the sellers to get comfortable with making sure that there's full disclosure as to who's coming into the home and if they are, you know, their health is in, in um, that, that if they're healthy prior to coming and doing the showing. Um, well, lastly, I wanted to talk a little bit about contract negotiations. Um, last month, we talked to Kelly Fogarty, an attorney. She talked about, from a buyer's perspective, what they're looking to see in a contract, protections they're seeking, et cetera. What should sellers keep in mind for contract negotiations? What are some of the hot buttons for sellers right now? Thad? As always, sellers are looking for a qualified buyer, a buyer that they can know when there is a closing, and also sellers looking for shorter closing dates, believe it or not. Many sellers have already decided on where they're going and they're ready to move. So buyers are strong that are coming in that are pre-qualified and some many have no financing conditions and with a fast closing date, they're picking that buyer over buyers that have other contingencies. Home sale contingencies are not desirable. When you have a home sale contingency in your offer, you know, you're not going, you're going to have to pay a lot more for a seller to consider it these days. Well, I generally agree with that, but I think we also have to recognize that every market is different and, you know, where sellers have the upper hand, 
Certainly buyers need to come in with a very strong offer with minimal contingencies in order to be able to get that home. But we are also seeing with COVID-19 and in my experience, the last two and a half months, we have actually seen buyers come into a contract with additional disclosures. Disclosures articulating specifically if anyone, any of the parties were to get sick with um, COVID-19, that it may adjust the time frame for closing. It may also give a buyer an opportunity to actually get out of the contract. You know, but the most important thing we also have to recognize is there's also been a shift with, you know, some people in their job, their employment, they would go into a contract and then all of a sudden, a seller is finding that a buyer has to pull the deal because they lost their job. And we saw a wave of that. I feel like that's slowing right now. But I think sellers need to be cautious of the fact that, you know, our market, you know, the, the uh, sorry, the job market is still, you know, really unknown. Sure. So even though your home is under contract, um, you never really stop marketing until it's closed. I agree 100%. Until you are at the closing table and buyer and seller are, are ready to exchange um, keys, you always want to be prepared that something could happen and you always continue to market. And Natasha knows that better than any of us. Yes, um, definitely. I would encourage, yes, to keep marketing, keep running, you know, social media ads, digital ads, print ads, just keep the, keep the buzz and exposure out there just in case. All right. Well, thank you guys. This has been great. Um, really appreciate you joining us. And if sellers out there have any questions, uh, of course, you are encouraged to contact your app properties agent. Thad, Natasha, Amy, thank you so much for joining me. And we'll see you next time at the market. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.